In this problem, we have to find the area of the region bounded by these two graphs. So let's go ahead and work through this very carefully. So the first thing we're supposed to do in this problem is actually graph these functions. So if you have a graphing calculator, you should totally take advantage of that. However, it's still useful to do certain things by hand. So a good first step is to actually determine whether or not these functions actually intersect. So the functions will intersect whenever they are equal to each other, whenever the y values are equal. So let's try to see if we can find any points of intersection. So a good first step usually uh, is to try this. Now, if we get no solution here, that means they don't intersect, and then we just have to uh, wrestle with graphing these individually. So let's see. So we set them equal to each other. Looks like we can subtract 8 from both sides. So we have the square root of x equal to 1 half x. Good stuff. And um, I guess we can square both sides now to get rid of the square root. Let's try that. It's going to give us x equals 1 fourth x squared. Right, you square the 1 half, you square the x, and we get here. And we have to solve this quadratic equation so we can set it equal to 0. So 1 fourth x squared minus x equals 0. Right, subtracting x from, from both sides here. Uh, the 4, the 1 fourth here is kind of uncomfortable, so let's go ahead and multiply everything by 4. So when we do that, we put a 4 here, we put a 4 here, we put a 4 here. So you get x squared minus 4x equals 0. Now that's what I was looking for, something nice and clean. This is pretty easy to factor. We can simply pull out an x. And that puts us right here. Okay, so we have a product equal to 0. So we can set each piece equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. And x minus 4 is equal to 0. This means that x is equal to 4. So these are going to be our points of intersection. So let's attempt to um, do the graph up here. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. So when x equals 0, we're going to get a point of intersection. So when you plug in 0 here, you're going to get 8. Likewise, plug in 0 here, you're going to get 8. So I'm going to put an 8 here. And I'll put a dot here. So both functions start here. Um, when you plug in 4 here, you're going to get the square root of 4, which is 2. 2 plus 8 is 10. Plug in 4 here, you'll get 1 half times 4 plus 8. 2 plus 8 is 10. So no matter what, we get 10. So I'm going to put a 10 here. And this will be 4 here and they'll both be equal here. So these two green dots are where the functions are equal. This is a square root function. So the, recall the square root function looks something like this. This is the square root of x. So the square root of x plus 8 is basically shifted up by 8, so it looks like that. So this purple one will be f of x. Really pretty stuff. And um, this one is a line, so this one should look like this. This will be g of x. So when you're finding the area, basically you approximate the area with a sum of infinitely many rectangles. And so what really matters is what is the height of the rectangle? That's what you have to find. So the height of the rectangle is going to be given by the top minus the bottom. So this distance is f of x. This distance here is g of x. So the distance we want is f of x minus g of x. So it's top minus bottom. So let's go ahead and write down our integral. So it's going to be this one minus this one. It will be f minus g. That's going to give us the height of the rectangle. So the area is given by the definite integral. Now I have to scroll back up to look. So we're integrating from, from 0 to 4. It's x values because we're integrating with respect to x. So 0 to 4. And it's top minus bottom. So the topmost function is the square root of x plus 8. So I'm going to use a bracket here. So square root of x plus 8 minus, and then the bottommost function, let me scroll back up, I lost it, <laughs> 1 half x plus 8. So 1 half x plus 8.
dx. Okay, so now we just have to um, go through the process of, of working this out. So this is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 4. Uh, the square root of x will stay there. And 8 minus 8, right, when you distribute this minus sign, they're going to cancel. So you just get minus 1 half x dx. Let's write this in a way that will allow us to integrate. So we can write the square root of x as x to the 1 half power. So we can write this as x to the 1 half minus 1 half x. I'm going kind of fast. Apologies. Um, these problems take a long time. It's already been over, over five minutes. Um, it's not a hard problem. It's just computationally uh, in intensive. Uh, this one might not be too bad, though, because this limit is 0. All right, now we can use the power rule to integrate. So you add 1 here. So 1 half plus 1 is 1 half plus 2 halves. So that's 3 halves. So we're supposed to divide by 3 halves. However, whenever you divide by a fraction, typically it's easier to multiply by the reciprocal. So let's do that. So 2 thirds minus 1 half. And there's a 1 here. So when you add 1, you'll get a 2. So it's x squared over 2. And we're going from 0 to 4. Let me clean this up one more time. Let me just multiply these 2s. Uh, so this is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus 1 fourth x squared. And we're going from 0 to 4. So we plug in the 4 first, subtract, and then plug in the 0. Let's go ahead and grind it all out. So this is 2 thirds 4 to the 3 halves minus 1 fourth 4 squared. Minus, and then when you plug in 0 to these guys, it all goes away, so we get a big 0. <laughs> That's great. 4 to the 3 halves. So how do you do that? Let me do it over here. Uh, so 4 to the 3 halves, the way I, I, lear I learned it is that the 4 goes here, and the 2 always goes in the little pocket. And you can put the 3 anywhere you want. So the square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 cubed, so you get 8. So this is 2 thirds. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, boom. So you can do it in your head. This tells you to take the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. There's the 8. Minus one of these 4s cancels, so you just get 4. So that's going to give us uh, 16 thirds minus 4. So to subtract this, you can multiply this by 3 over 3. This way you have the same denominator, so watch this. This is now 16 thirds minus 12 thirds which gives us the wonderful number of four-thirds, which is actually the answer. So I hope this video has been helpful. Wow, almost eight minutes. There it is. Eight minutes. We did it. It took exactly eight minutes. Uh, take care.